now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Hello and welcome back to the All In Podcast. We have a returning member, Alistair. He hasn't been here in a while. Honestly, we haven't been doing too many episodes either. We kind of missed last week, didn't we? But that's okay. We're going to talk about uh, all the playoff matches for LCS that happened last week, which were... Oh my god, we just said it. It was Dig versus uh, 100 Thieves and FlyQuest versus Energy. And then uh, we're recording on Saturday. So yesterday we had uh, Dig versus Energy. And today we had TL versus 100 Thieves. Unfortunately, tomorrow is uh, Cloud9 versus FlyQuest. So we won't be able to talk about that on this episode. Maybe the next one. Um, but first, I'll you know just bring it to you guys. How you guys doing? Uh, Kevin, how's it been? Uh, I just came back from LA. I would say, honestly, half of the teams missed the games last week anyway so it wasn't too big of a deal but i've been doing pretty well it's good to see you as well alistar yes yes how have you been alistar that's that's good that's good uh john a lot of changes in my life going on uh okay new school whatnot so i've been busy but glad to be back oh spicy spicy yep i'm uh also going through some changes um, I'm gonna cut my hair tomorrow, so oh, that's a really? big, big change. Yep. <laughs> are you cutting it short, or are you just doing some, just like cleaning it up? Oh, I'm doing it completely short. Yeah, it's just, it's just completely wow. short. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, era. it's a new era. Yeah, I've just been getting annoyed with long hair lately, so that's that. Uh, um, but let's talk about league now. We have a uh, a decent amount to cover. Um, so let's start with last week's games. Honestly, it was a bunch of three O's, right? It was uh, O's Dick. And- Yep. Yeah, oh, I guess a 3-1, right? But um, Dignitas versus 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves completely booty clapped them. That was not even close. Dignitas looked very dead in the waters. Any any quick reactions on that? Yeah, I, yeah. okay, my quick reactions, I actually thought that it would be the other way around, where Dig would go like 3-1 or whatever my prediction was, because they have the, you know, the veterancy and all that. But yeah, I guess at this point, I give up on veterancy in the sense of it needs to be two to three veterans and then two to three new people it's like if it's not that and mm. they're not like prime veterans i i guess it's just people just lose their mojo like jensen played such a bad weekend but he was in all pro like just a split ago guy like yeah, yeah wasn't it just last split <laughs> so yeah. like i i think it's not jensen necessarily just falling off or something or maybe the meta is a little bad but i think it's the team right yeah yeah dig any thoughts, Alistair? No, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's I I think the dig is the new uh, new talent suppression machine. Yeah, I, I don't know about new. It's not always been like this. Well, I, in comparison <laughs> to you know, it used to be TSM. Now it's now it's dig. Someone come up can come up with a creative acronym for it. But yeah, I just, yeah. I, don't, uh, I have no faith. I I don't really care what players are on dig no and toss. Faith. I just kind of see the dig and toss work <laughs> and assume that they're probably going to lose. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good thing to bring up. Is like uh, a question we can ask to test that, right? Is if we had these exact same five players under C9 or TL or FlyQuest, they would probably be way better, right? Like the coaching staff, the general, just like company staff, um, is gonna play a huge part how they structure mm-hmm. everything. Uh, I'm sure Dignitas has never been good at that stuff, and that's why they've always been a mediocre team, even when they sign really good players, right? Dignitas, tons of good players have gone through uh, Dignitas, uh, and they have left... Dardox Mm. Saligo, was it? Or they had a roster like that. Oh, no, no, it was a Demonte roster. Mm? And they benched their mid laner and Dardox. Mm. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what it was, but they had a roster that was actually doing well, and they're like, let's bench it, and then they completely tanked the rest of the season. And it was truly... Yeah, the decision of all time. That was in 2020, I think. I remember Darduck was on TSM and immediately went to dig the next split and for summer, and then they were playing pretty well, and then they got benched, and then that was like the last time we ever saw Darduck. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, actually I don't know if we've yeah. ever even gotten like a like where is he at now sort of update because I think the league, uh, the powers that be at Riot for good reason don't want to highlight this guy. I, actually, <laughs> I do know where he is. I don't know why I know this. Oh, it's I, so, I know where he is too. Sh- yeah, he's like you coaching. He's like coaching EU West like Masters players or something like that. Or he was. Uh, I don't EU, know. Like EU Dardoch is currently uh, playing under the uh, Lotus main team in OQ. Oh wait, that's even crazier. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, that's strangely relevant to the people we have here. And <laughs> like, why are we randomly talking about Dardoch? But um, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize that he has gone very far down from LCS. Then I, I, I mean, no offense to Lotus, they're great, but. That's a big, 
difference. But that's so cool. I think that's cool. Um, I mean, he he was a really toxic guy. So, yeah. Um, uh, he, was, <laughs> he was one of the personalities that made League interesting. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But I totally understand why he doesn't have a job in LCS. He was... Oh, for absolutely. years incredibly <laughs> toxic so but i think it's it's cool that i i mean when i heard that he was doing eu master coaching he was actually like pretty chill and good so maybe just being a teammate was bad uh in the high pressure situation or when he, he was really young or something but whatever we're, we're going down the weirdest tangent let's go back to lcs um we're, what we're talking about D dig versus 100 thieves right yeah, we're talking about dignitas there wasn't a lot to say about the actual game but i yeah. did predict them to win Pretty hard, actually. So I predicted Hundred Thieves to win three two, which was also like I got the the name correct, but it wasn't like the vibe was not correct at all. No, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there wasn't but... there wasn't a vibe at all, honestly, in that series. It was just dead <laughs> dead heartbeat. Um, no pulse. <laughs> no pull. That was hard, man. Because um, what were you saying about that day? There was like a bunch of like really stompy series uh, that all happened in the same Basically, day, right? All around every region in Korea and China. It was like TS also had a two or something like that. Basically, mm. every series, if that last, basically, if the other game that we're not talking about yet yeah. hadn't had a win, it would have just been all sweeps that yeah. whole weekend across international esports. Yeah. So truly, it was it was a vibe. I'm like, wow, I can't wait to watch esports this weekend. And <laughs> Yeah, I I think because it was yeah it was I think like six or seven uh best ofs that happened in the LPL and LCK were all like regular season and then LEC, LEC. had like G two three owing um SK I think it was or GX or something like that and then we had yeah. hundred these three owing dig or something yeah that was just last weekend but then we move on to the next uh day which was Energy versus FlyQuest actually a much closer series even though it was very FlyQuest favored. Um, I guess it's just how bad Dig played, right? To make it seem much closer, but um, mm -hmm. you know, Energy took a game, and that was, you know, made it better, <laughs> but still pretty one-sided. Um, thoughts on FlyQuest and Energy, and definitely thoughts. You know, we can kind of talk about what do we think is going to happen tomorrow, seeing how they played against Energy, right, versus Cloud9. So, uh, yeah. So they they there's this narrative that there's the big three, right? It's Team Liquid, C9, FlyQuest. Yeah. I know if i'm convinced that flyquest is still part of that conversation just because mm. i don't feel like in a best of five they're particularly reliable in this meta mm. so that's just my initial take and that's largely off the back of i just feel like the league is just so used to whippo and uh except for a choice few matchups i feel like even though they didn't play that bad like they won and it was pretty convincing honestly uh they kind of screwed up they they lost to themselves right in the game they lost I just lost I I feel like it's not right to put them in the same league as C9 and Team Liquid. Hmm. 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 Interesting. I agree with some parts and I disagree with some parts because I think FlyQuest has. I think there's parts of FlyQuest that are better than Cloud9, but I also think as a whole, which is really what matters the most, Cloud9 is above and beyond FlyQuest. Mm. Um, I think I think Busio and Bwipo are better than their Cloud Nine counterparts. Okay, but interesting. And then I also think, better than Thanatos. I I definitely think it's better than Thanatos, and I definitely oh, think Busio is better than Vulcan for sure. Okay, okay, um, interesting takes. I think mid is slightly JoJo favored. Bots per, or AD carry is pretty even, and then jungle's pretty even. But I think um. I definitely think Cloud9 is just better as a whole, like as a yeah. like finished product. They just they transition smoother in the games they lose is when someone's just having a really off day and mm. they kind of just lose the game for their team because they're trying to do too much to make up for their mistakes. It's kind of the way I and see I guess it. That is also oftentimes Thanatos, so I, I yeah. can kind of see your point. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I can kind of agree in that aspect, but I also think Bupo does the same thing where like, they're the reason they lose their teams, the games, are like, so sure. often. Whippo's but, not like, it's a player like, who will... Yeah. He won't lose quietly, but he also won't win quietly either. He will. He is no, the yeah, definition yeah. of a feast or famine player. <laughs> yes, I can 100% agree with that. Um, I think, like, Whippo loses you the game in champ select, though, which is kind of funny. And then Thanatos loses the game on Renekton, like, but flashing in randomly by himself. So they, like, lose his, their team, like... For, they lose the game for their team in like different ways, and I do think that's interesting because that Volley Bear game we got to talk about it, right? Against NRG, 
Bupo locked in Volley Bear top, and it was like they get lane swapped. I think right. I think they got lane swapped on um, at least early on, and then he was just really useless because it's Volley Bear and a lane swap. Uh, and then he, when they went back to laning, uh, he just like died, and then it was just over for Volley Bear for the rest the most of the, the game. Right? Bravery build I've ever seen on Volley Bear, and that is yeah. Like, it wasn't even yeah. like the standard Jack of All Trades build. It was just kind of like. No tank but he's so far behind that he's not tanky and then he decided to go third or fourth item quick blades and then he's not still yeah. not tanky and he's just getting one shot so he can't just cdr it, it was it was weird it was a it was a rough one so the the jack of all trade builds alice was talking about is uh you go like rod of ages into uh navori and then you get a bunch of like uh stacks uh so you get a ton of cdr and you just spam your q and w and you just stun people and heal over and over again uh, with shields, um, pretty strong build if you can get really ahead, but is a complete solo queue like monkey build. It's, it's not actually build. it's like good. famine. It's not actually good, is in my opinion, honestly. Uh, I've tried it a bunch. <laughs> so the fact that he did that in a lane swap, right? It's like the fact that he lane swapped at all should have just meant just go full tank. But I get the idea, honestly. He probably thought in his head, it doesn't matter how much more tank items I buy, I'm not going to be tanky enough to matter. So try and build some damage. But I don't think Navori is the one you do. Like, I think he just should have built, like, a Zonyas or something. If he was thinking that way. But regardless, he probably should have just stopped running it down so often. Because he did it a lot. Um, but that that was Whippo. You know, that's Whippo in a nutshell. Because he had a good other couple games um, yeah, where he played true. normally. <laughs> normal champions. So, um, you know, can't really fault him you too normal heavily. Champions. But... He played Darius, brother. Like... <laughs> I guess he did he play did, he Darius. Did have that Darius Quadra game. Yeah, but it's normal for Bupo. He's played a good amount this year, and when he was on TL, and then I guess Adam plays. I guess there's only two people in the world who play. Uh, play it right. Both Is Fnatic. Adam even an active player anymore? Yeah, he's on BDS. He just played. I thought he was a bench. No, no, no he just played yesterday. No. <laughs> he's been playing this whole year. Yeah, yeah, Adam. Um, uh, BDS. I'm pretty sure BDS. Okay, I I don't watch LEC back closely, but I thought he I... was bench for someone. I, oh. I think he might have been for, like, a day because he was talking back to the coach, but it didn't last long. Like, it, it was... Yeah, he's been playing for, like, 99% of the games this year. But there's only two uh, Darius players. There are also former Fnatic at the same time. It's weird that they have the same champion pool. Cause they both play Olaf, too. And it's, like, there's super like shit, two like, two guys in the whole world who play this shit. And yeah, it is. And to be on the same team region. I mean, there was, a, <laughs> there was a small time when, like, lots of people did it. Like, um... Broken Blade and BB, B yeah. yeah, BB and uh, Fudge, they were playing Olaf as well, and BB played some Darius. So it is kind of like European top laner and Bupo, or not Bupo, uh, Fudge randomly in there, um, playing Olaf, Darius, and these weird juggernaut picks. I don't think they're good, especially if you have to not go TP. I think it's really easy to, like, um, I don't know, just take your jungler up there and screw them up on the on a on a mm. reset, right? If they have no no TP, it's super easy to do. Uh, and also, Darius has to get level one prio with like his summoners, right? And if he doesn't do that, he's just f for like the first four waves. So I this is just more me saying I don't like Bupo, I guess is why I'm bringing this up. I don't like his champion pool at all, man. And I I think that these champions and this playstyle was good like a couple years ago when people were just learning it. But now that mm. like I feel like there's so many Dariuses and shit running Ghost Flash top, and there's like Garen's running around with Ignite Flash proxying, like I feel like Pro should know exactly in top lane at least how to like abuse the crap out of no TP top laners because it is it is it is not fun. I, I almost um, want to say that like I think um, Dokla should have just matched the no TP, taken Ignite, and just fist fought him. Yeah, maybe, probably. I mean, at that point, the way Dokla is playing and his jungler is not actually going top, like, I probably agree. Um, on a team-wide level, I think you should just camp the crap out of a no-TP top laner. But... Yeah, just, just start start your yeah. red buff, level 2 gank him with, uh, with the, what was it? I think it was uh, Talia Renekton, wasn't it? Or maybe it was so. Nelly Renekton? I... Let me look it up, actually. It, it, was, um, it was a very aggressive yeah. top side, which they didn't really do anything with. Yeah, and that's it's partially neutralized with the um, with the Darius pick, right? So what what I do, um, I think is fine if you play Darius is if like you can make it so you have a really hard push, pushing like bot lane or something or really hard pressure so that let's say you do do that early two level two gank to top lane against Darius, 
um, can you force something bot side, like an early invade or an early gank? Um, I think that is like kind of some of the counterplay. If you want to play run Darius with no TP, but I don't recommend it. It's tough. Um, but hey, that's what FlyQuest does. So I think the FlyQuest is probably going to end up doing something like this against Cloud9, right? They're going to have to cheese Thanatos. Thanatos loves to play Renekton. We've already shown that Whip was willing to play Darius into it. So we'll see what else uh, FlyQuest can cook up because this is, it's pretty, I think, one sided. Like, I think we're all going to predict Cloud9, right? Probably like 3 1 or 3 0, I imagine. I don't know. But let's just throw that prediction out right now. Um, yeah, who do you, how do you guys think FlyQuest is going to match up in a C9? And who's going to win? What's the score? Mm, I mean, I've already put them a, a different league. I do think the score will be kind of volatile. Mm. I actually think it will be a 3-2, even though I think they're in different leagues. I don't know if I'm convinced that Cloud9 is going to be that clean in series. It might be, like, not a close-looking 3-2. Like, a, <laughs> they did something, like, a big playmaking from Inspired, out-jungling Blabber. I think... For me, the Inspire Blabber part is the part where I'm like, okay, there's an edge there, um, in my opinion, for Inspired. And then across the board, like Thanatos and Blibble are going to throw games uh, in some way or another. Although Thanatos, we've never seen him in a, like a real playoff scenario, like a big time playoff game. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I still think it's 3 2 for Cloud9, but Cloud9 will look pretty like, like the definitively better team. It just will be kind of messy on the way there. I mean, this is Thanos' first uh, playoffs ever, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, prediction, uh, Mr. Alistair. I agree with the 3-2, but I don't know who I give Which the way? edge to, to be honest with you. Really? Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, feel, what shirt feel, are you wearing today? Feeling, <laughs> feeling cloud 90 or feeling uh, Aren't like you wearing a cloud 9 shirt? <laughs> uh, I actually am. Because it, okay. it was the shirt I, the I got of, when like, I was like in Raleigh for the, like, top for of the, the finals. Clouds. I was like, wait a minute. But <laughs> it's so troll. <laughs> I didn't, you know, like, I didn't I think know. I forgot we were doing a podcast today. Know. This was just the first shirt I grabbed. So You're wearing the Cloud9 shirt. You're going to predict against them. I love it. I love it. Bro, I have no Do allegiance it. to any team. You know this. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Hey, fair That's enough. True. Me neither, honestly. Not for LCS, at least. Yeah, you know? I think. Yeah, um, I do. So. Yeah. Oh, really? We never, we never would have guessed that one, Kevin. Hey, this year, this is the year, actually, though. There's this a, is the year. For, one yeah, team that we'll matters. get to them. TSM, baby. We'll get to them. We'll I'm get so to them. Ready. Okay, we're leaving them for the last. Okay, because their game already happened today. Yeah. So I, I um, think just to be different, I'm gonna go three two fly quest. Just to be different. Okay. Well, hey, sometimes that works out, you know, because like. I really also Dude, sometimes you pick EDG in 2021. Yeah, you just predict the <laughs> no whole one tournament. Even has them sometimes on their radar you pick TRX. <laughs> yeah, hey man, I mean that just happens. Whoopsies, you know, just predicting things that would never happen. No, no one would ever predict a million years. But um, I think for for Cloud Nine, the big question mark is going to be Thanatos, right? How does he perform in his first playoff series? Bupo is a very seasoned, experienced <clears throat> top laner, playing in a ton of playoffs. Um, FlyQuest definitely knew that they're going to be matching against against Cloud9, right? I can imagine while they're prepping for energy, they're just mostly thinking about Cloud9. I think FlyQuest is going to cook up something spicy, right? They have to. That's like the only way they win because definitely the I think the bot lane for FlyQuest is also a big strong suit, but I don't know. Cloud9, I, I think the jungle mid is just better. I don't know. Inspired Quad, they're both good players, but they never felt like a jungle mid in my opinion. Uh, Jojo Blabber feel like a real jungle mid, where they take over the map with each other, um, and they play off each other better. I wouldn't say well, still. I'm still hesitant on calling them a good jungle mid, um, but I'm going to go Cloud9-3-2, yeah. I will I quickly pause okay. something, too, and I'm going to build the theory up, which is, down. with series play being a thing, I don't know if there's as big of a debuff going to playoffs now. This is our first year actually doing best of threes, right? Oh, uh, so yeah, okay, yeah. So Thanatos you have to actually come has back best from of. behind and all that stuff. Yeah. True, true, true. And then Thanatos already faced some uh, turbulation, right? He lost it to TL and still came back and was playing fine in the next series after that when they played FlyQuest. So, yeah, we, we already saw Cloud9 vs. Fly just happen, right? But, I mean, FlyQuest, FlyQuest is a very clever team, right? I think they're they're a team that like lacks in firepower, but is like, smart. Um, and crafty and they're gonna do weird stuff right that's kind of how i feel inspired uh definitely is as a player and masu 
just just to shout him out really quick is actually like looking really really good um i think i put him better than the berserker dude (laughs) yeah way way better i think yeah, I put him second all pro, and then now mm-hmm. in playoffs, it definitely feels we haven't even seen Berserker play, so Berserker can prove us wrong tomorrow. <laughs> That's true. But um, Masu so far has played his series. He looked better than um, Yeon looked today, in my opinion. That's just a hot take there. But Yeon didn't have to play mm. that well. But he didn't have to play. He didn't really well, didn't have yeah. to. You're, you're like, right though. Um, but I I do think you know Masu in his one series looked better than Yon in his one series. Uh, I think but... individually Masu is the best city carry in the league. Oh okay I... okay mm. Masu is the best. Okay I, I, mean, I, I still I, have Yon. I think he's better season. than Yon. I think Yon is really so good. Far, but other than yeah maybe the playoffs so far. Hmm. Yeah my, my reasoning is that I think Yon gets he gets away with a lot more because he has far and away the best support in the league. I think individually when you look at what they eat, like what every AD carry does. I definitely, I think Masu has done more on an individual level than Yon has. I, I can kind of see that also because, yeah, yeah, Masu has more opportunities to do heavier lifting as well. Yeah. Like he does have to lift some have stuff to carry up. carry more. Yeah, he has serious. to carry. I, I do <laughs> feel like Yon did coast a bit this split. Like I can agree with that. I still feel like Yon's the better ADC. But he got to coast for sure. Like they were smurfing on everybody, like the entire split. So, um, that's true. Like it, it, some of the games from TL just look so easy, right? So I, I can definitely see that. But I still feel like Yon's the better ADC. But it's close. It, it definitely is close is. for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely doing the unfair thing of rating the international play Yon showed us. Oh like, yeah, because I mean, it happened. I can't like, get it out of my head. Yeah, <laughs> you literally can't forget like that. Yeah. The Samira play. Yan literally revolutionized NA Ezreal NA Lucian like both historical memes like yeah uh, <laughs> they, I have a lot of bias for that obviously I'm already a Liquid fan but he's playing characters that no one else can play at this level in um, in NA yeah and his Lucian's gotten so much better remember that was like such a meme worthy pick for him for TL Lucian Nami was like the worst shit ever <laughs> for like, so not long this shit again please <laughs> yeah like literally all the last year lucian nami was the most painful thing from tl but now he's crazy good at it so it, it's pretty awesome to see that so you know excited for the eventual matchup between either tl fly or tlc9 i think that's going to be a banger um so mm-hmm. let's let's move on we we're already talking about tl they did play 100 thieves it was a 3-0 stomp uh 100 Thieves looked better in their 3-0 than Dignitas did. So that's about as much praise we can give 100 Thieves. Uh, <laughs> I, th- I think, I mean, honestly, they didn't play that bad. I actually think, I mean, 100 Thieves didn't really play that bad. They were just completely outclassed, and it's not really fair to compare. Like, it's a team filled with, like, tons of rookies, and 100 Thieves is not a pr- premier organization anymore. TL is the premier organization, and they're on a team with a bajillion years of experience so i can't really fault 100 thieves i really can't fault sniper it's like it's the classic meme of you show all the accomplishments of impact next to sniper <laughs> second time in playoffs that was such a funny i i still can't believe they that, this they do it every time <laughs> yeah but like that time statistically felt like they had a, a vendetta like, yeah, they just felt like so they do it all the do. time. I don't mind. I think it's funny. You got to do it, right? They it's sports. You got to show the stats. That was brutal. That is true. Yeah, they did it to fake God, too. They've done it to every top player. You know, you don't have a choice. You're playing against Impact. What are you going to do? They do the same to Faker over there, you know, Caps over there. You just got to do it. So, Sniper uh, ran it the hell down. He does not. He still <laughs> doesn't know how to play lane swaps. Let's be honest. Like, I just saw it happen. He messed up every single lane swap i feel like he died on repeat game one and game two game three uh i mean he did better in the lane swap because he died slightly less he was still getting zoned off but hey happens um rough times okay that that was me flaming sniper a little bit and mostly glazing impact but what are your other thoughts on the tl 100 thieves series uh impact is unfair um yeah i I don't really have too many other thoughts. I think APA he had one really bad moment early game on uh it, it was it he playing Smolder, right? And he just he just got caught early game and died. I'm like, what the hell is that? But I think he has matured into being like a super threat. He can mm. play all the styles. He pulls out Talia. Oh wow, that was amazing. He pulls out his Ziggs, obviously a major threat. Like this guy is the NA truth right now. So, <laughs> and it's crazy to say because I literally said half a year ago this guy should be not in the league. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. APA, APA is legit. Any thoughts, uh, Alistair? Uh, no, I mean, it looked like a hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby kind of matchup, you know? Like, mm. it... Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't... It, it was a beating. Let's just say how it was. Yep, it there, was a three beating. real teams. Every other team had, like, a 30% win rate at max. Yeah. So. It's true. It's it's tough for 100 Thieves. Real David versus Goliath moment. Um, eh, we can talk a bit about 100 Thieves. We are going to see them play again. Because uh, we don't really need to glaze Team team Liquid that much, right? Um, we're, we're going to be talking about them probably for the rest of the, the year. Um, so 100 Thieves. Uh, how are they... So, how does the playoff bracket work? They have to play Dignitas now, right? Um, that's going to probably happen next weekend. So I think 100 Thieves definitely needs to work on the lane swapping for uh, Sniper. Obviously, that's like very clear because uh, Dignitas in their series was completely dead. But then they actually managed to beat Energy. But well, we even talked about the series. We just skipped over that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, Dignitas beat Energy, right? So... Uh, they're going to be more alive, I definitely think. I think the Dignitas are definitely going to be more awake in their rematch against 100 Thieves. Um, and I think Dignitas is not going to be good at lane swaps, but they have to be better than 100 Thieves, right? There's no way they're worse than 100 Thieves at lane swaps. I don't think it's possible. So I think by nature of the way that team is composed, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. Like, Dignitas should be consistent at lane swaps compared to 100 Thieves, I hope. Um so we'll see how that rematch goes. I think it's going to be way more competitive than the first time they played. Mm -hmm. um, man, I, I do think River played a lot of mage junglers, and he should have just said, nah, I'm not going to play him. Like, I hated the Ivor in Game 3. I thought that was just a rollover and die. The Maokai Game 1 was fine, like, kind of, but not really. Like, Maokai Smolder is, like, the most pathetic mid jungle against <laughs> Talia Vi. Like, it's it's so pathetic, right? What are you going to do against Talia Vi? You just lose for the first 15, 20 minutes. Everything. Um, I hated that, but man, they, they picked, you know, they picked, they picked Zyra Smolder again in game two. So like, I do think 100 Thieves really needs to think hard about what they want to draft, right? Do they, do they want to play these ADCs mids? Do they want to play AP junglers? They are getting slightly phased out. They are getting, we're on live patch, right? For 100 Thieves. They can play other stuff. There's Vi just got buffed on this patch, right? You see Umti playing it. Maokai Sejuani is still a thing. You could honestly... If this, you're going to play against Dignitas, you could honestly just bust out other AD junglers, right? It's really not that bad to just bust out Jarvan, right? You lower your win rate by a couple of percent, but you're on a champion that, like, River is insanely good at, like, goaded on, right? So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think 100 Thieves really needs to rethink how they draft. That's, like, step one. Step two is rethink lane swaps, right? Um, any, any other thoughts on 100 Thieves? And we can just talk about 100 Thieves Dignitas and uh, mm. think about that matchup we'll go. I have a mini thought that's related yeah. to them, which is like we talked a lot about their hundred uh, hundred thieves lane swapping issues with you know young players who literally never played in a world where this was a thing. Yeah. Uh, I also will say that there is a part of me that I'm like I'm kind of worried that the lane swap just in general, even though it's not as prominent now as it was you know earlier on, uh, I, I'm worried that like teams are being propped up by it. Like it's it's just such a huge skill check and knowledge check that like yeah, Liquid is probably having one of the best splits an NA team has had. Yeah. But at the same time, like I mean, yeah, they also have the people who are incredible at lane swap and they're really well coached, right? So I'm like worried that that becomes a not a crutch per se, but I'm saying like it's an unfair reason for them to be bad in this uh, time, right? Like 100 Thieves was not bad last split. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's just because they got figured out. I think the lane swap has been such a polarizing factor of why so some teams are doing super well and some teams are just like looking like absolute shit. Yeah. I mean, I would fine. counter that by saying, like, the... I think it's, in my opinion, right, like, it's it's a strategy that every team is aware, of, aware about and a team realistically is only as good as their infrastructure and it's for for example like the same reason why dignitas is so bad like we, we're assuming like it has to be an upper level issue whether it's management whether it's coaching whatever right but like they have story good players and like uh Spica, licorice jensen zven like these are all accomplished players but you put them on this dig org and they're bad it, we were saying like if you put those players on cloud nine or tl that that's a like potentially split winning team but i think 
TL is better because they have better coaching staff, so they're be able to abuse this. So I don't think... I think it shows that they're better at adapting rather than their skill check. I mean, they are skill checking them, but I don't. I think it's they're better at adapting rather than mm, they're crutching off of other yeah. teams not knowing yeah. swap. Well, yes and no because like there is a big difference between uh, it's literally just impact Corja J and probably Umpty. I don't know. Uh, played through the original lane swaps. That's a big difference between. I think all of hundred these have not played through lane swaps. Maybe River has. I do think that's a big. River should have. He yes, probably has. The, game right? is still, the, the way they they're played out is still very different now, though. I feel. Like. I, I also do think that the that's true. The how lane swaps happened back then to how they happen now is a big difference. So how much does that knowledge actually carry over? I think it can mm. be a pretty big amount, but it's also like the coaching staff for TL played like hundred thieves in org was not didn't exist in League of Legends uh, when the first lane but swaps. But you can happened. still hire experience. That that part I'm not as concerned about. In my True, opinion, but I like think TL still does the same thing to every split. team. I think TL is yeah. still going to do the same well, thing, no matter if there's no swaps what, or not. That's true. No, 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 okay, yeah. So I think we can we can agree with that. I can agree with that for TL at least domestically that with or without lane swaps they would be the best. I'm saying about hundred thieves, which mm -hmm. is uh, who we're trying to talk about and compare to Dignitas, they would mm -hmm. be way better if there weren't lane swaps. That's the argument that I think I'm trying to make, yeah, and that's that the argument I made as well. Yeah. So gotcha. the meta. The way the meta changed is so extreme and like specific to lane swaps that like this specific meta change fucked hundred thieves. Like if it was a different meta change that happens every year, right? Every team has to adapt to meta changes. I, like I'm gonna, I would fault hundred thieves way more if this was just a normal champion. Like, like if we had eighty mids, AP junglers, but no lane swaps, and they couldn't adapt to that meta, I'd be like, yeah, well. Hundred Thieves sucks, you know. Like that's that's just that's how it goes. And <laughs> I, I'm not. Suck. Yeah, it sucks to suck. But they have to deal with this uh, AP junglers, AD mids, and lane swap tops, and all their team are rookies. And it's like, it does feel like all the cards kind of stacked up against Hundred Thieves, right? It was like, okay, well we could have hired a coach who knew how to play lane swaps, but like that's so specific. And then Riot could just delete it at any second, any patch. So fourteen point one seven is the world's patch i think someone said or 14.18 uh, 14.18 is the world's patch yeah so we have next patch coming up which the patch notes have already kind of been uh shown uh publicly and then 14.18 there are currently no talks about that i've heard from like freak or froxon or anybody about doing lane swap nerfs so for the rest of the year i think lane swaps are staying in which sucks but mm -hmm. like at any given point between now and 14.1 Riot could have deleted lane swaps, but they chose not to. They they did nerf it, right, by increasing top tower damage, I think, to 75% for five, the first five minutes or something like that. Um, and they did something else, uh, I think. But, like, you know, it's kind of weird for 100 Thieves that they have no experience with lane swaps. They, they don't have anybody on their roster with experience with lane swaps, besides maybe River. And they don't know if they should invest into learning about lane swaps that much. Because Riot could delete it at any point, and then like Riot does delete these weird strategies often, actually, but they just chose not to this year, which is honestly, I just fucking I hate Riot that they do this. Why don't they just tell us, hey, are you gonna delete lane swaps or not? Okay, you're not going to, then we should just like dive all in and learn it, because I feel like that's that's how a lot of teams feel about champions, right? Should we learn this new champion, Aurora or Smolder? Okay, well, Aurora was obvious that the champ was broken. Smolder was not that obvious, right? Like, I feel like it was had like a 40% win rate and like everybody thought it was bad. Some people would play it and be like, you're wasting your time playing it. Oh, it turned out to be broken then. But like the, the whole like playing around whether Riot's going to nerf something or not, whether to learn it or not, is a very, I think, frustrating game, especially for new orgs and less experienced players. Um, bit of a rant yeah. there. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> last thing I'll say to that, because I, I, I agree with some of it for sure. Yeah. Uh, like, I remember when mage bots were a thing. Like, what right. if what if we had to stop recruiting double lift because we only wanted mage bots, and then they just reverted it the very next year, and you're like, wait, we just got rid of double lift. Fuck. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. That's like an extreme example, I know, but it it still like kind of indicates the point where I, they don't have to tell us literally what's coming up, but if it's like a huge meta thing like lane swaps, right, or yeah. whatever weird thing they're gonna go with, I'd like a little bit of stability so that these players like don't waste their time because. If, let's say they built up all their skills on this, and then the world's buff just has no lane swaps. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, 
Yeah, like that's like that would be ridiculous, right? Or if the world's meta, as as much as we're all gonna groan and be sad, what if the world's meta doesn't have AD carry mids and AP junglers? Right? Isn't that what everybody's been playing for the last like six months, and then the world's just doesn't have it? It'd be like the Juggernaut patch, right? All of a sudden, there's just like these four OP champions that you have to play that no one was playing all year long that are happening at Worlds. So it, you know, is Riot getting better at it? I don't know. I don't know what to say. But uh, yeah, it, it is weird. It is weird. I, I don't like lane swaps. I wish they deleted it. I really wish they deleted it right after MSI. But they decided to keep it in for all summer, which is a choice that they made. All right. Is, is a choice. Is a choice. Dignitas. What are you guys' thoughts on Dignitas? They played against NRG. Oh, yeah. We can say farewell to NRG, too. We can kind of just talk about that series. Dignitas beat NRG 3-2. Uh, I think one of their games had, like, like 100-something kills, maybe. I don't even know. It was, it was 49 crazy. total, I think. 49 total. That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, was that was a series. That was a series. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what do you guys thought? 49 kills, and it went 49 minutes. Oh, Sorry, one of the games went 49 minutes. Two different games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm looking at it now. That was insane. That was a lot of kills. Yeah, that game, that <laughs> series was a fever dream. Honestly, I had a lot of fun, at least, watching it. It was pretty interesting. Yeah. It, I don't think the highest level of play was displayed, but I also think only it wasn't mm. the most boring series. Like, there was a lot of, like, we're both just fighting down the pits, right? It's like a monkey fight. Yeah. Um, it's from The Simpsons, if you know the gift that I'm thinking of right now. Yeah. I think that Contracts had a brain this game. I also had a brain. I think Dokla is mega washed, especially. I just, well, okay, I'm really just thinking that last game, that Kennen play, those yeah. Kennen plays. Like, yeah. you cannot be picking Kennen. Game five, <laughs> like your org's fate <laughs> on the line, and you play like that. Are you kidding you me? You flash alt um, on people who are in, who are inside a bard alt already for like the last yeah. three quarters, two I, full I, seconds. Like he must have been his nervous. Like, but you're a veteran. You're like just one brain of lag, the bro. oldest players in the league, dude. Just like, oh, like, I can't see. He's been oh, playing pro for it. the last oh, 10 no. years, bro. Yeah, that's I just, rough. Like, <laughs> I just can't fathom how you can play like that. Anyway, it was a fun series. I had fun watching it. And honestly, the, it not wasting my time is the biggest compliment I can give it. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, the the Dig 100 Thieves 3-0, that was a waste of time. That was 100% should not have shown up to watch that. But this was fun. <laughs> this was fun. Yeah, what are, what are your thoughts, Alistair? <laughs> it was fun to watch. That's the best I can say. I mean, I, yeah. I wish we had more series like this, especially at the bottom of the bracket, because, you know, it would be... <laughs> It would give you a reason to actually tune in and be like, oh, wow, I can't wait to watch 100 Thieves and Dignitas play. And it's just like the most boring thing ever. But now you have games like that or series like that. I mean, to be fair, first, game, first two games were blowouts and the last three were just on the edge of your seat. Neither of the, it doesn't matter the outcome because neither of these teams are making it to Worlds. But like, <laughs> it was still so much fun to watch. And I yeah. feel really bad for who he cuz he got inted same with contracts yeah they were energy should not should never have lost game 5 that game was over probably not no i mean i don't think dignitas should have lost some of these games too i think it was like game 4 or something um at least for the for what jensen was doing and all the oh no no, no. game 4 was the smolder never mind never mind yeah. fbi was crazy big um yeah i don't know i feel like def this did feel like one of those series. I yeah, energy was throwing everything, uh, and they were losing themselves the game in a lot of situations. We got to talk about the elephant in the room. His name's Palafox. Yeah. He used to be known as Palafaker on this podcast, um, and in many other worlds, many other places. But he is no longer Palafaker. He is Pala. Palafake God. Yeah, Palafake God. That's oh. a good one. <laughs> I was gonna say pa Pala Shaker, but yeah, that that one's. Is, you know, faker shaker, but it, it, he had a really bad year. Just, just his year's over, and we have to talk about it as a whole. Energy won last year. They won last year's summer, and they went to Worlds, and they beat G2, and they made it to quarterfinals. Summer split, or spring split, was pretty rough for them, but it wasn't as bad as this. I would say summer split was the harshest drop-off for this team and a lot of the players on it. Mainly the solo laners. Dokla and Palafox, I think, had the biggest drop-off in LCS history. 
like ever. So that's really tough. That's really tough. Maybe yeah, we can think of another up, example. But... Speaker? Well, hmm? I mean, I, I, I think that's, that's less Speaker's fault. But... I don't think he was like from yeah. the peak to just a complete drop immediately. It it was like I think Speaker was worse in terms of uh, placements, but maybe not yeah. in terms of eye test performance. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, no, right, he went right. from like what first regular season to ninth, right? Uh, on, on FlyQuest last year. Um, so Spiegel was pretty rough. <laughs> uh, he also, uh, yeah. I, I also mm, think um, pa Palafox, it was harsher because Dokla was always kind of a liability, even when they're, they were winning. It felt like Dokla was still the weakest link. He would still do well. Like, he clutched up pretty hard, um, especially uh, in the finals against C9, I remember, uh, when they won the split. He, Dokla was very, very clutch. But Dokla was always the weakest link in my mind, anyways. Uh, always getting randomly caught and solo killed and stuff like that. But would clutch up in team fights. Didn't clutch up in team fights. I had negative clutch. Um, but Palafox went from actual like best looking player in the entire league, smurfing and everybody, like having the most clean mechanics we've seen on Jace and Talia and stuff like that. APA's father smurfing on Eminem's mechanically difficult characters it wasn't yeah. like he was abusing a specific meta right he was playing characters no. that are traditionally just skill expression yeah poor palafox he's not playing well he's playing really badly not much else to say okay well i'm gonna highlight some of his plays because okay <laughs> not much else to say, but <laughs> shit on him. no no no, no sorry I, I, can't, wow. I can't resist because hey on this podcast we always talk about the funniest plays and like in one series, Palafox made like two of them. He, he okay, <laughs> so I can't he really can't resist. Did the, like the worst audition a player has yeah. ever done for the next split. Yeah, true. In like in his in his in his final series of the entire year, and hopefully not, but maybe his career. We don't know. This was that bad of a drop off. It might have killed his whole career. But my favorite one is Azir. Okay, he's his team's doing great. His team is winning like pretty hard. They have a, like a bajillion kill smolder. He, he, the t enemy team is under their turret, and he dashes in, and he doesn't do anything. He just kind of chills there with them. He dashes in and just stands still for a solid, like, 0.25 seconds, flashes back towards his team, panics, completely shits his pants, and then, uh, obviously, Dignitas just run him down. And then Pal Fox, he's like, oh, my God, I'm getting jumped on. I flashed away. Okay, let me push him back. Oh, I missed. And then he tries to ult him back. He misses. He dies. His whole A couple other players in his team die as well, and it was... One of the worst plays <laughs> ever. It was really bad. Uh, they still won because they had a really fed smolder. Um, another one of his pretty bad plays is he was on Corky. He just like, kind of valked in, died. I mean, I've actually seen that a million times. It wasn't that bad. Uh, that, that's, Palfox, a, that's a Faker classic, too. He's just learning. That's, that's true. Faker has done that so many times this year, you know? Um, and the Tristana, too. The jumping in on Tristana that has been actually hilarious. Um, it, it's just so weird how, like, Energy, he actually had a really good Corky game too in game two when they were stomping him, and he had a pretty decent Talia game. Um, I mean, nowhere even close to to APA's Talia. APA's Talia is like some of the cleanest Talia I've seen, actually. Like unironically, he had the cleanest walls. Those are some crazy walls for for APA. Uh, Palafox, he did have a really good Talia, but it, it it was within the series he would show like signs of being the same old guy and being one of the like just the worst version of him unfortunately um so i hope he can do better i really like i really like this team i really like i really like palafox as a player he seemed pretty cool pretty good he had a good um, jungler was... and it's not like he didn't have synergy with these guys at some point in history so it's it's really unfortunate yeah yeah and we just played an aram with poom clg poom you know he's probably looking at his former team and be like what are you guys doing we were always so good i mean he was in aram while they were uh well, you know so um, <laughs> but um yeah i i don't know i guess that's a farewell to energy their season's gone uh we'll see what happens to the org and the players uh i think it's rumored that 100 thieves and imt are going to be leaving for next split but it could still be energy we don't know and we have we don't really know which team is leaving the league next year please be imt um, i mean imt's like i i'm, I'm a 99 percent sure they're gone but um yeah so that's energy. Okay, let's talk about Dignitas a bit more and their in their series against Hundred Thieves. We'll predict it. Uh, who who do you think is going to take it in their rematch? Three mm. oh Hundred Thieves. Three oh Hundred Thieves again. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I, 
I still think it's a hundred thieves angle as well. I mm -hmm. I think hundred thieves showing that they had a pulse this game is actually more impressive than it looks because it's against liquid, so it's hard to look good. But yeah. I actually think that it was pretty difficult to show up against liquid. So I think they're just gonna be unless they're tilted. Shit, that that I actually don't know. Hey, it happened literally this almost the same thing Hundred Thieves did happened uh last split. Like Hundred Thieves they three owed NRG and then they went on to play Cloud Nine, they got three owed by Cloud Nine, and then they went into the lower bracket and just Collapsed. pooped out of the playoffs. Yeah. It was, or this just happened B last split. Or BDS <laughs> every time a best of five happens <clears throat> and they're up two oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or Mad Lions when they go I want to talk a little international. I, I want to talk a little bit about LEC after. Yeah, yeah. We'll just a little, a little bit because we're getting close to world. Little... It's time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see a single bright spot on Dignitas. If you want me to be completely honest with you. Okay, not a single. I see a little. I, okay. I think so. I'm gonna bring. I, I don't think yep. individually any of them are capable of carrying the weight of the other four. I don't. Isles oh, wow. is perma dying in jungle. Spica has three losing That's lanes. True. Uh, Licorice can't doesn't know how to play lane swap and is I feel like he's just picking wacky champs. Um, Jensen can't play eighty carries and Sven is kind of doing the same thing I always think Sven has always done as an ADC, which is just kind of like not lose but then not win, not really do anything unless his team's winning. Yeah, I. I've had that vibe for Zven before, but I do think it's going to be a little different. This is this rematch is going to be closer, I think, 100% think. I th I do think Dig is going to initiate lane swaps against 100 Thieves. I think Dignitas is not good at lane swaps. I don't think 100 Thieves is good either. I think Dignitas prefers the lane swaps though, honestly. Just uh, 100 Thieves looks so much worse in it, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, I do think it's going to be closer. I also think... Um, Hmm. Jensen learned something, but they didn't really execute it. And that Dignitas looked so much better when he was on mage mids. It was just true. Dignitas was actually kind of cooking. Like, they actually looked decent-ish against NRG when Jensen was, like, on Hoi or something, or Oriana, or whatever it was. Um, so, if they don't pick AD carry mids, which I don't think they have to against 100 Thieves, right? Like, oftentimes when people are meta slaves and they have to play the meta... Is because they're trying to play at the most optimal level. But when you're playing for like fourth seed or fifth seed or something like that, you don't have to play optimal. You can play what you're good at. And I do think that if Dignitas, uh, I watched the Zven interview after that five game banger, and Zven was saying, hey, we had a really good week in scrims. And, you know, we were surprised at how bad we were playing today against NRG, but we still won it. So, like, that's momentum for them. And it could be a breaking point. It could be a little aha moment where they look back. They stop listening to their dumbass Dignitas coach, and they'd be like, "Just put Jensen on mages, every game. Put no uh, more Zeri, no more Smolder, no well, more Zeri Smolder." Is kind of close to a mage, honestly, but I don't think he knows. There's no prio though. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Don't give me nothing. No, no, no. Eh, no, no Smolder for Jensen. God, no. <laughs> I like you got Smolder, but for Jensen, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, Smolder's OP as hell. The closest thing you should play to yeah, no. carry is Azir. Mulder yeah, Jensen. yeah, I'm down for Azir. I'm down for Jensen Azir. I'm down for Jensen Oriana. I'm down for Jensen Hue, but, like, gotta stop with everything. You know, I'm even down for just for the memes. Jen Jensen Annie, okay? Just not Jensen AD carry. Jensen Echo. Um, I, about, yeah, I... <laughs> Echo? Yeah, yeah, classic, guys. So funny. Um, I also think... <laughs> I think Spika should. I mean, if we're going down the memes, I actually do think Spika should play Lilia. Like, I think he should just. The champ is so broken, and he is the Lilia meme king. And he should play Lilia and Vi. I think that's what Spika should play every single game, if he can get it. I think just um, play Vi or Ori. I don't think you can play Lilia if your mid laner is also just going to be playing, like, Azir. No, I, th I think you send it. I, well, if you can't get Vi. Obviously, if you can get Vi, you pick Vi with an AP mid laner. But otherwise, like, I don't really want to see. I don't really want to see them on Sejuani or Maokai. I just, I just think they're so fucking useless. <laughs> with, I, I with agree. That stuff Give too. That, speak, uh, just, uh, just ego up, pick Hecarim, and say, tough. Okay, yeah, I'd Jensen, be down with that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I okay. think unless they do something like that, they're just gonna get clowned on. It's not gonna be close. Ooh, I think it might be a bit. What do you closer, guys think about? Not by much. I actually think it's going to be competitive, so I'll just give my prediction right now. I think it's going to be 3-200 Thieves. I think it's going to be close, though. 
Um, I also I do think Hundred Thieves is gonna be a little boomed, and I do think Ding Toss is gonna be a little on the up and up, and it is gonna close the gap, um, but not enough. Uh, but okay, what do you guys think about Skarner Jungle? We did see it. It's kind of slowly popping up here and there. There's a lot of haters, a lot of naysayers, but also people playing it. Kanavi's playing it in LPL. Do you guys think Skarner Jungle is good with Grasp, Heart Steel of all builds? Thoughts? The build, Thoughts the, uh, the character, yes. <laughs> the build, I'm right. not convinced. I okay. think they took okay. it at a, a in a spot that made sense for it. But the build, I don't think it's like a you know every game I'm going Heart Steel Grasp Skarner. That's yeah, because that's what it is every game across right. the entire world. I'm honestly world, not yeah. sure why. <laughs> I, yeah, I keep I'm, seeing I'm it. I'm like, hmm, is that really is that really optimal? There there have hmm. been a couple no. uh, Zeke's rush on on Ooh. the Skarner. That's true. I have seen that actually. That is true. I like that more than the Heart Steel. I think the Heart Steel um, build like... is situationally good. Just I mean, to be fair, just mm -hmm. like Skarner jungle in general. Um, yeah. But I think Skarner requires a lot of team coordination to pull off. Yeah, uh, I could I could see also Skarner. Uh, yeah, it, re it can really suck uh, against champs that you can't land E against, right? It's just, that's pretty much the entire kit actually, if you can land E or not. So yeah, is interesting. is is pretty bad against certain ADCs, honestly, like Smolder <laughs> in uh, in Ezreal. Um, but it's good against all the other ones. Um, okay, last question I had about the meta is what do we think about um, Varus? So Varus, I think, going into this playoffs is slightly buffed. Uh, he's not seeing that much play, but there is the weird build that is viable right now, which is the Jack of All Trades Locket Varus build. You can do that mid, um, but I also do think that the Varus mid laner, I mean, or Varus ADC, we do still see Varus ADC across the world. I weirdly feel like he's better than what people are, are considering has. Um, I have a feeling that he's pretty good. You don't you don't like the I saw you shaking your head, Alistair. You don't like the locket build? You I don't think, think it's good? good in solo queue or if I, I think in pro play or competitive, if you're picking that build, you can probably just pick whatever you want and win. I think that build in solo queue is good because people aren't gonna punish hmm. it. I think in um uh, pro play no. I think Varus himself I, I, as an ADC is very strong. I yeah. think Varus will eternally be a good pro play ADC. He's kind of he kind of fits a similar niche to Aphelios, where he's just kind of mm -hmm. always going to be strong, where he's going to have utility and good damage. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. the locket Jack of All Trades is it's it's a solo queue build. Okay, interesting. I I, I weirdly feel like um, I think Varus top gets banned against G two a lot because Broken Blade will play it in top lane. Um, and it's like really oppressive for teams. I do think you could bust it out. Like I think if Broken Blade wanted to bust it out, he could bust it out, and it would be really good. Because, I mean, well, it depends on the matchup. But I mean, I, again, I agree. But I feel like Lock G two could probably yeah. just play whatever they wanted top lane. They'd probably still win anyways. I mean, I don't know if you've been watching any of their series, but like I, ha I have, I have been, been playing I have not like been shit. Series, <laughs> yeah. I know G two. Okay, well. To win, so. I wanted I wanted to get the thoughts on the locket build. So that's the thoughts. I think it's better than what you're saying. It is strong in solo queue, and I actually do think it's it's good and it could be good in competitive, just because of all the ADC mids running around. Um, and, I think if you uh, put like you have Varus any... mid with that build, and then you have to deal like you have that, and in your counterparts a a Corky or a Smolder or a Zeri. Oh, I mean, you're never gonna pick it because the only time you're playing Varus mid is when you're getting pinched mid, right? So I don't, I don't ever see it happening in those situations. That so like it's very niche. Well, what I mean, it's like like there. Yeah, I just don't see. Yeah, there there were time. Like... Yeah, there were times where um, I think it was GX they were playing Varus mid, right? And it was because they were just getting pinched mid. So, yeah, I, I, it's very niche. Obviously, uh, you're gonna see Varus mid, especially if you see Varus uh, solo lane with Locket. Um, okay, last thing I wanted to ask about was are we gonna see Enchanter Senna? All right, it's already getting a huge nerf in 14.17. Uh, we already saw Enchanter Senna uh, played, right? We saw it played um, yesterday, I think, um, and it's pretty good. And we, we're seeing some bans for it. It, I, is it going to be a regular occurrence? Is it going to just be regularly banned? I think probably it'll actually just be. Banned. I might have just answered my own question, uh, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't banned today, uh, either side. So, what do you guys think about Enchanter Senna? Um, Go. Saw it in pro play already in two regions. It's pretty broken. Uh, it's mm -hmm. disgusting. 
I think it is mm. going to be broken, but I think it's it's just the case of a lot of AD carry mains in, in pro play take a while to learn non-standard play styles. Oh, you're gonna yeah, they're gonna have to. You have to have your support play. You can't have an AD like well, enchanter center. Yeah, yeah, so that's also true. Range. Mm -hmm. And not everyone's range a center player, even for the sports. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a very brain dead strategy because it's super easy. <laughs> Um, from my experience, for NA, then, if you think oh, about it, <laughs> yeah, my experience with it, I actually yeah. think it's really overrated. Uh, really, I think really? it's I think it's really good if you get counter pick and then you're playing, um, you know, you're playing into like a Nautilus or something like that, where you're gonna outrange them bot lane. But even then, mm -hmm. with the lane swap, it's you're not getting much for it. I think. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I I don't that's I fair. just don't think it's as valuable as other enchanters in my opinion, um, and I think even against um, engaged champs, you just kind of cry because your peel like Sen Senna's peel is really bad. She has heals and shields, and she, sorry, she's mm -hmm. one big shield and she has a bunch of heals for sure. But mm -hmm. I would rather just have a Seraphine or a Karma. Or Lulu. Seraphine is broken too. I we have seen a little bit of Seraphine across the world. Yeah. I just I also think but. Senna's biggest issue is Senna is a completely useless champ when she's outranged. Mm. And I feel like there's a lot of champs that like just have much more effective range than her. Like Leona can just drop an ult in your head from outside of your any of your spells range, excluding your global ultimate. Yeah. Nautilus can flash hook you, he can flash ult you, your E takes has a long wind up time. I in my opinion, if like if I'm playing on a team, and obviously I'm nowhere near pro level, but if I if we're playing an enchanter, I would not want to play Senna. I would rather just play Seraphine, or Lulu, or Karma. Right. Um, that's interesting that you think that. Well, it's it is a a brand new pick, right? Enchanter Senna is completely brand new to this patch. Fourteen point one six is like pretty much when it was birthed, and that's the patch we're on. And it's getting nerfed next patch. Um, I I think. Honestly, I'm just gonna go like so. Your experience is obviously very valuable, but the like just the the win rates are absolutely turbo insane on this champion. Like she is the highest win rate enchanter, I'm pretty sure. So we'll see. Like I, there's no concrete evidence that I can really say to say that's actually good. I just have a feeling, just like with win rate and my very small sample size, that she is the most broken enchanter right now. That's why she's getting like super hard nerfs next patch. Um, I certainly think so, she's strong, and again, to be fair, most yeah. of my experience with it is solo queue. And when it comes to solo queue, I don't, that's, I don't care yeah. in the slightest how good a champion is if it can never perform. That's why I don't like playing with Shivana, because I feel like yeah, I feel I like mean, Senna and Shivana are just two champs that never perform in the game. Obviously, pro play, competitive, let alone pro play, are two very, very different games. True. But I think the way pro play is played out, it's pretty standard to have an engaged support because that engaged support's going to be able to roam and have much more pressure than yeah a super right slow now. Senna W rather than Yeah. I think Lenny. right right now like you you're you are correct that like I'll seed right now Senna support actually doesn't make that much sense just cuz of lane swaps. Like you just don't want an enchanter at any point in the game when you're playing lane swaps. So that I'm going to agree where we probably won't see Senna take over the meta in 14.16 across the world and that she'll see play if like teams know that they're not going to lane swap for some reason. Um but yeah, no. She she doesn't really have a place if if uh you know a lane swap could happen, right? So I do think that's actually fair. Um but I think if lane swaps didn't exist, I do think right now during this patch Senna would be giga prio. Like I would agree. Super super high. I, I would agree for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay, so that was good. That was interesting. I just hated pistachio. But we pretty much talked about this weekend. <laughs> we talked about all the meta stuff I wanted to talk about. Uh, let's talk a little bit about LEC, and then we'll wrap this sucker up. Um, so, what happened in LEC? Fnatic, um, they beat G2? Wait, did, did, did that happen like two weeks ago or something? I think they did. Oh, no, 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 they didn't. No, they did. I, I didn't watch. I, I don't have remember. I've not been watching the, in the LEC, lower bracket. So. Because they oh no, Mad Lions beat G2. Yes. Mad Lions beat G2. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. So Mad Lions beat G2. That was pretty hype. And then G2 reverse swept BDS. Oh my God, BDS cannot win a series. That was really hard to watch. Um, <laughs> and then what was it? Oh, and then Fnatic barely beat Mad Lions. Um, so the top teams from LEC are Fnatic, Mad Lions, and G2. Those they're going to Worlds guaranteed, and we're just kind of figuring out seeding for them now. Um, 
gotta say i'm feeling pretty good i feel pretty good when i watch their series i feel like they all of their series fanatic versus mad should is like kind of technically first seed versus second seed like temporarily while they're in playoffs right that looks like dignitas for 100 these or dignitas versus energy i'm not gonna lie dignitas versus energy was like strikingly similar to fanatic mad and strikingly similar to, to g2 bds like the quality was pretty low so um yeah what are your what are your thoughts on lec kevin if you watch them yeah yeah uh quality is pretty low like the the game today so spoiler alert here for anyone who hasn't watched the game on saturday august 24th uh they just like left the the base open they just walked yeah. in at the end of like <laughs> they just walked in at the end. i'm like okay come on now yep. like the quality yep. is so and again, I'm very biased. We are an LCS podcast, but we've admitted that they've been better in the past, but that, you know, we have yeah. a chance, right? And we've done it multiple times for years, right? But like, come they on, have. objectively, they want to what, are we, <laughs> what are we looking at? Um, uh, yeah. Because like, there's just, there's so little, um, how do you say it? There's so little coordination. It seems the macros just completely fall into the wayside. They don't really know how to lane swap. The team fighting is still pretty good, but it's just like it's like an individual mechanics game is the narrative I would push. But on a more worrisome level, like I just feel like their coordination, I'll, like team fighting is fine, but their map movement coordination is like just oh yeah, really bad. Even G two, like G two just looks like I'm like oh, man, they're okay, but yeah. I really mm. think, and I'm probably gonna hate myself later when I'm like. When someone quotes me, but I'm pretty sure that Liquid just like clears that whole region, and probably C9 does. Hey, it's okay. I'm gonna say it too. I don't know about C9. That might be taking it too far. But clears definitely TL. G2? I, I think oh yeah, no, I think TL clears G2. Well, I was gonna say TL clears the entire region. Oh, no, I don't think C9, C9 does. I don't think C9 does not. Most no, no, no. Of them. Really? You, which ones? I think C9 would struggle. Would I think C9 would lose against G2 and struggle against Fnatic and Mad? I think that's their level. I think TL would clear. Okay, Fnatic I guess and Mad clearing. And... Actually, yeah, the definition. Of, no, you're right. There, I don't think C9 would struggle too. against Mad because Mad Lions International. Well, okay, you can say Mad Lions International. Okay, I mean that's fair, but it's a completely different roster. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's the same with Dignitas, though. I used uh, yeah, to believe it was like, like it's a completely Dig's different a roster. Bad roster. No matter who's on the roster, bro. <laughs> I, okay, this Mad Lions to me feels different in that um, they don't have like chokers. They have just the most crazy freaking play style, and they do it every single time, and it looks the same every time. And if you can beat it, you win. If you can't, you just lose. So I, I feel like this Mad Lions team, their identity doesn't really fit that. Maybe they could still choke. I mean, it's Mad Lions. They could still choke internationally, obviously, right? I'm not going to doubt that. I'm just saying the way they look to me, Mad Lions, is very much like. If C9 doesn't have a certain level that they're good at, they will just lose to him. Like, it doesn't matter how much choking Mad Lions. They don't have Niski anymore, guys. Like, <laughs> the choking is, like, much lower mm. possibility. Mm. So, yeah. I, I do think that, like, I think Thanatos would get rocked by Murren. Just because Murren has such a weird-ass champion pool. And they play so hard to aggro you in the first 10 minutes of the game. Like, like unnecessarily hard do they aggro mm -hmm. in the first 10 minutes. And I think C9 could definitely collapse to that. TL would tank that shit and beat them for sure, uh, but I think C9 could fall victim to it. I I could definitely see, I could see JoJo getting solo killed honestly these days. Like it's rough, man. So, um, yeah, well, that's what I think. We did lose that to G2 cool seven times when JoJo was on a roster, so that's rough. <laughs> yeah, seven times in one tournament. I still remember that. Yeah, that was rough, man. That was rough. Uh, we don't. That was a, those are some dark times, buddy. That was twenty twenty two, right? That was just yeah, like some that really was dark the times terrible, right? the bad <laughs> MSI format because the last two MSIs yeah. have been goaded. Yeah, that was the year we went three and fifteen at Worlds. That was like the worst NA year ever. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but hey, I uh, so yeah, that's LEC in a nutshell. I do think TL clears the entire region. I think G two is the worst they've looked in so long that I could actually see. Yeah, TL beating them. Because I don't think we could see TL beating G2 in a long time, right? The last time TL beat G2 was at MSI 2019, and then G2 just went on to win the entire tournament. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then like, That was the last time. Speed so, runs. <laughs> yeah, we got sped around. The, like, we, like, TL beat G2 once in the group stage, and then, and then ever since, I don't think TL's ever taken a game off of them, right? So it's been rough. But hey, and, and energy is not going to Worlds. So rough, rough stuff. Uh, all right.
going around the world a little bit more. LPLs in their playoffs. Uh, Weibo Gaming just upset Top Esports. That was pretty nutty. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Jahu's actually the GOAT domestically. He's just going to choke at Worlds. That's okay. I accept it. Hey, he made it to a <laughs> final. Honestly, at this point, you making a finals is good enough. <laughs> like, jo- that's fair. Chovy still hasn't. So, wait. That's Oh, that's fair. He, no, made, he has won not side, right? But he hasn't yeah. been to a World Final once in his career. And he's been the best player, mechanically at least, for a very long time. That's true. That's true. Zahu making finals last year was amazing. Um, okay, we'll see. We'll see if it's different this year. But we're going to see this team back at Worlds again, which is pretty awesome. Uh, considering, I mean, they don't have the shy, right? Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so random. They're making worlds again. Like they should have just been bad after they lost the shy, but they're not. They're really good actually, and still underdogs winning. Um, BLG is also going to worlds. That's no surprise. They're really good. Uh, all right, let's talk about LCK a little bit. I think uh, to update T1 is kind of bouncing back. They had a good series against. KT. KT, they knocked KT out of playoffs. KT has to go through the gauntlet if they want to make it. I mean, it's just typical for that KT roster. It's basically DRX 2022. But yeah, um, T1 is kind of bouncing back after looking really bad for most of this year, uh, most of the split. Um, Genji did not do a KT, and they did not choose T1. They chose Hanma Life, which is very smart. I don't think you ever choose T1. Um, but Genji's probably going to win the split. And I do think T1 is going to meet them in the finals. That's my hot t- LCAK take, There's which is not no hot way. at all. This is the, the least hot you take, think actually. T1 is going to beat Genji in the finals? That's pretty hot. No, I think they're going to. I think it's going to. No, no, no. T1 is going to make it to finals oh, okay. and lose to Genji. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be the like, same thing that happens I'm every like, year. That's not, that's not lukewarm at all. That's I've never heard anyone claim that. Okay. No, no, no. Cool, cool, cool. That, okay, but. Um, it's it's a lukewarm take because it happens every year, but yeah. every split we always think T1 looks bad. There's no way they're gonna make it. Like, literally last year, T1 looked really bad because they didn't have Faker. They had Poby in, and uh, KT chose them. KT went first place in the in the regular season, and then T1 beat KT after getting chosen. And then KT and then T1 somehow miraculously made it to finals. I think it's gonna be the same thing's gonna happen this year. I think like everyone's doubting T1. They're not looking very good. They did have a good series against KT. And then I think they're just going to beat Don Juan, go to finals, lose to Genji again, and then T1 wins Worlds again. <laughs> that's, the, that's the year, guys. Summed up. Don't need to watch anymore. Subs- All right. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. All right. Anything else? Anything else you want to talk about? We covered the whole world. We covered the whole world. It was a long episode. I, I left for a little bit, and I'm back. Um. So um, apparently BDS has been reverse swept like three times. Oh, yeah. Like That's a good meme. <laughs> it, it, it's like honestly kind of depressing and, and ho- Im- hilarious at the same time i don't really have words for it at this point how can you how can you keep how can you be such generational chokers um, i don't know and yeah. and on that note why i brought it up other than to laugh at them uh is <laughs> i i think that like teams like g2 and t1 just have their name value and once you get ahead against them the pressure is all on you like they they're warming up and they're like all right we've been here before and then especially bds but you see it all the time in LCK too. Like I actually think KT should have at least won two games yesterday, and mm. I'm just like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, they have the like KT, a, bro. They have like a 380 stack mold and no pressure on them, and then suddenly they're just like taking a weird positioning around Dragon. Smolder dies once the game ends, and I'm like, Ugh. yep, uh, that's BDD KT in a nutshell. Once. Yep, that's that's, that's that also is. BDD in a nutshell. I uh, don't no, Okay, yeah, but that's all right. I said. I, I think people just get two nameplates attached, and I think that's why certain teams have like such a crazy matchup record against others, and hopefully why Liquid does not care, because Liquid has played against all of them. Yeah, I mean, I do think that 100% has bearing. Like, uh, if you go back to, like, like 2018, the LCS, um, there was, like, a famous thing where, like, Cody Sun could not play against Doublelift because he was such a big fanboy, and he would just shit his pants in lane and do something stupid every single time they landed against each other. It'd be, like, 100 Thieves, like, the best team in the regular season, matched up against Doublelift, shit his pants completely. <laughs> Can't play the game. Yep. Makes the most unforced error ever. And I think that Doublelift has been doing that to LCS players for ages. Bjergsen was doing it to LCS players for ages. Uzi Baker's was doing, doing it to Doublelift for ages. <laughs> It's true, and, but we just talk about domestic, like, like, um, mm. domestic, like, mental blocks, right? People mm. have been having it against Faker for ages, where it's like, people just cannot overcome it. Like, Chovy had it specifically against Faker 
for years on yeah. Griffin and Hanwha Life and DRX and whatever other teams. It was until not until deep into being on Gen G that they started to actually beat regularly T1. So definitely mental blocks against players exist. I mean, APA Palafox, that just happened, right? Like, <laughs> finally the curse was lifted. Zeus. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, it yeah. Match too. It makes no sense. <laughs> double lift. Kryptonite, stage. man. Kryptonite. Yeah. Oh, well, that one's double lift. Group. That, that one, yeah. He's that one's just, like intimidated a, by a group stage. It's it just a vibe. That's a, a mental vibe. vibe block. Yeah, that's just like... <laughs> Blocked by vibes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, all right, well, that's going to do it for us on this podcast. I think we did a pretty good covering. Uh, let's be real. We're all predicting TL to win the split. They look way too good. If TL does not win the split, I hope it's because Cloud9 went absolutely Super Saiyan and became even better than we could have imagined. Because TL has uh, already qualified, so it's only good news if we have another NA team that can like play at the Apex. Yeah, yeah. So I want I want, I want, want C9 to, to really show us something amazing and uh, push TL, because the way things are looking... Teal is going to 3-0 in finals and just take the whole split, right? That's kind of how it looks right now. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we get something good. All right. That's going to do it for us in this podcast. It was a long one. Thanks for joining. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.